All right, family, this morning I just want to bring a word to you this morning that I believe God has, has placed in my spirit to share with you. Because I believe that we are living in a time right now, and I think going forward and even in this year, and also in the years to come, and this should be our lifestyle, this should be every day in our lives that we live out our faith. So that's my message this morning, living out our faith. Come on, tell your neighbor, living out our faith. Amen? So that's the title of my message this morning, living out our faith. And I think that we have come to a place and we have got to come to a time in our lives where we cannot be silent any longer. Amen? We cannot be silent and think, well, we cannot speak about Jesus. We cannot even declare. We cannot speak about the Lord and we cannot share our faith because we are too afraid, because we are, we are the ones that want to be very conservative. Amen? But we're going to come to a place where we can say, God, we are not afraid. Like Paul, he says, I, I am not afraid. He says, I will preach. Hello? What happened? Just went dead. I will preach Christ and him crucified. He was never afraid of speaking about Jesus. Amen. And church, when God is speaking about living out our faith, we've got to be the ones to go out and we have got to be there to show people who we are really. Amen. Who we really are. We are the ones that God has touched our lives. God has placed in us. God has shown us things and we've got to see and we, other people have got to see what is in our lives amen are you catching that church that's why many a times we hear people say we've got to live your faith what does it mean to live your faith amen what does it mean to live your faith and there was light <clears throat> amen <laughs> all right what does it mean to live your faith how do we live our faith in our daily lives Amen? How do we live our faith in our daily lives? Church, I, I want to say this. As we are entering into a new year, as we are coming into new things that God has prepared for us and God has laid for us, as we're coming into it, we've got to be the ones to say, God, I do not want it. Whatever I've, the way I lived last year and whatever I've done, uh, there has to be a change this year. There must be something different in my life. Amen. Are you catching that church? As I said to you, you want to see a brand new here. You got to, you got to be a new you. Hello. Come on. You cannot go into a new year, living the old day, living the old things, the old lifestyle and expecting something new. It's not going to happen. Amen. So whatever we have done, however we have lived last year, we have got a purpose in our hearts and say, God, this year, I, I want to come up higher. I want to go further in you. I want to rise church because every single year I say to you that our lives cannot be the same. It's got to rise. It's got to be better. Amen. We got to come up higher. We got to live our life in a better way. Amen. We've got to expect God to do greater things in our lives. We've got to expect God to say, God, I'm not going to live this way any longer. I'm tired. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. <laughs> Hello? Come on. We have got a, we've got a purpose in our hearts and say, God, I, I, I don't want to go into this year the same way. Amen? However we have lived and the things that we have done, we've got to say, God, this year has got to be a change. Got to be a change. I want to study the word more. I want to pray more. I want to be the ones to, 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 to look to the house. And I want to be the ones to, to, uh, to really, you know, timekeeping and everything that we've got to do. God, God is saying, if it has not been right in the last year, let it, let's fix it this year. Let's fix it this year, church. I said this to you before and I'm saying this to you again. If you can wake up early in the morning... And make sure that you're at your job 15 minutes before you start. And you come 15 minutes after church starts. What message are you giving to God? Come on. Let's be honest, church. I'm saying with the same intensity that we look at the world, with the same intensity that we go out and do our day-to-day -day business, is the same intensity that we have got to look to God this year. 
Amen. If it feels, if you feel that this year, listen, you know, I've been setting my alarm for whatever time. Put it half an hour earlier. Come on, let's be honest. <laughs> I'm giving you some tips. Make it, put it half an hour earlier. And say, no, I'm going to purpose this year that I'm going to be on time. I'm going to be at Bible. I'm going to be in studies. I'm going to be a, at church service. I'm going to be in prayer meetings. I want to be there. You, you've got to make that decision and you, you've got to be intentional about it. Church, listen to me. You've got to be intentional. Amen? And that's why God is bringing this to us this morning, this word of living out our faith is that we cannot be frivolous any longer. We cannot be the ones that silent. We've got to be out there to make a statement. To stand out, not to fit in. Amen? We've got to stand out. And that's why if you look at in, uh, in Luke chapter 18, let me go quick. Luke chapter 18, Jesus made this statement. Luke chapter 18. And in verse 8. Can I read? And put it up on the board. Luke chapter 18. And in verse 8. It says, I tell you that he will bring about justice for them quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find what? Faith on the earth. When the Son, however, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? This is the words of Jesus. This is the words of Jesus, church. Will God find faith on the earth? That's why we have got to live out our faith. We've got to be the ones to live it out. We're, the one, we're got to be the ones to say, God, I'm not going to be like that, 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 what do you call it? Uh, intro, uh, not introvert, yes. Just being myself. I want to be an extrovert. I want to be the one to say, I want to speak this out. I want to share my faith. I want to be there to go out and speak about who I am. Amen? About who I am. So that we are able to know that people need to know who we are as children of God. Are you catching that church? Amen. That's why Jesus said, when I come onto the earth, will I find faith? And then also in the book of James chapter 2. James chapter 2. And in verse 26, it's for just as the body without the spirit is dead, so also faith without what? Works is dead. For just as the body without the spirit is dead, so also faith without works is dead. When people do not see our faith through our works, it is dead. Come on, church. Our faith has got to be shown. In what we do, in how we live, in how we go about our day-to-day -day lives. Amen? It's got to be shown. Are you seeing that, church? Faith without works is dead. Amen? Why? No one sees it. Come on. Am I right? Faith without works is dead. No one sees it. But people need to see our faith in our works. In what we do, in how we live, in how we conduct ourselves, in how we do things on a daily basis. Amen? Faith without works is dead. Are you seeing that, church? That's why God is saying, He's saying we have got to live our faith aloud and bold. Are you seeing that, church? We have got to live out our faith aloud it's going to be bold amen it's going to be bold people need to see people need to see and 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 to know that who we serve what as children of god how we can go through life and how we can how we can express god through what we do and that's ultimately our lives is expressing jesus am i right expressing jesus you know, one of our, our brothers in, uh, you know, with the uh, Ope South Africa, uh, Royus. I mean, uh, every time you listen to him, it's, listen, you, 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 he, he's just, he's just so radical. 
I mean, he stands on the street corners and he, and he speaks. And, you know, while, while, we, were, while we were telling him, listen, you know, uh, unfortunately, you know, with, with, with politics and going into, uh, you know, uh, addressing the nation, there's certain things that we can do and we cannot, all right? And one of the things is that we've got to go out and show people as much as we know that we serve Jesus and we know that we are children of, of God, but we've got to touch the whole entire nation. Amen? But he's so radical. It's like Jesus, everything that comes out of his mouth, it's just got to be Jesus is king. Jesus, Jesus. He just, and he's just radical. God is saying, we have got to live our faith out loudly. We've got to be bold, church. We've got to be bold. People need to see who we are. People need to know that we are the children of the Most High God. We are the children that God has chosen for the last days that we can do and we can affect the nation. We can affect cities. We can affect homes. Amen? Are you seeing that, church? We've got to be loud. We've got to be bold. Amen? We cannot contain it in the four walls. See, a lot of times we think, okay, fine, we're living our faith because we are, we are serving in the worship team and we are serving in the children's ministry and we are within the four walls. You know, God is saying, when you talk about living your faith, it's out there. How loud do we live our faith out in the marketplace? How loud do we live our faith wherever we go? With our families, in our, in our business, wherever we go, how loud do we live our faith? Do people know that we are children of the Most High God? Amen? Are you seeing that, church? We've got to. We've got to be the one that God is using. Amen? God is using to go out and to touch lives. Our everyday expression must be of the love of God and what he is doing in our lives, church. Amen? It's not to be retained in the walls of the church, but instead, it's an everyday expression of your love for God and what he is doing in our lives. Amen? Of what he is doing in our lives. It's got to be an everyday expression. Our children got to see it every day. Our colleagues got to see it every day. Our workplaces got to see it every day. Our neighbors have got to see it every day. Amen? I see that, church? That's why it's a choice we must make that impacts everyone around us. I want you this year, church. You've got a purpose in your heart and say, God, my life must be such an influence this year. My life has got to be an impact this year. I've got to impact others' lives. I've got to impact other people. I've got to be the one. My life this year has got to be a life that impacts my, my family, my, my, the, you know, wherever I go, people all around. My life has got to be a life that impacts people. And you make a decision for that, church. We got to be like Daniel, purpose in our heart to say, God, I, I want my life to be an influence. Amen? I want my life to be an influence. Have you seen that, church? That's why it's a choice we must make to what? Impact people and everyone around us. I heard a, a poem which is really, really good that, that, that really is the essence of why we are alive and why we live. Let me just share that with you. And I know it's going to bless you. And this poem goes like this. It says, a river does not drink its own water. Okay? A tree does not eat its own fruit. Am I right? A sun, the sun does not shine on itself. A flower does not give fragrance to itself. I see that church. A flower does not give a fragrance to itself. That's why living for others is a rule of nature. Oh, come on. You got to get that deep down on the inside of you. Living for others 
is a rule of nature. We are all born to help each other. No matter how difficult it is, life is good when you are happy. It is much better when others are happy because of you. Let me say that again. We are all born to help each other. No matter how difficult it is, life is good when you are happy. It is much better when others are happy because of you. Amen, church. That others are happy because of you. Church, I said this so many times. God has touched your life. God has brought you to where you are. God has done the work in your life, not for yourself. Not for yourself. You live for others. Parents, what are you doing right now? Is everything that you are doing is to pass on to your children, am I right? I'll just give you an example. Everything that you are doing right now, what is that for? Is to pass on to the next generation. So what does it tell you? That whatever God is placed on the inside of you, what God is put in you, is not for you. That's why others will be happy because of you. Others will be blessed because of you. Because of your impact in their lives. Amen? I see in that church. So let me give you a few. Just a few. Uh, just for you to understand. How do we live our lives? And what does God expect of us? So that we are able to live out our faith. Every day. Amen? Alright, so Mark. Let's go to the book of Mark. Mark chapter 11. Sorry, Mark 12. Book of Mark chapter 12. And in verse 28. Let's go quick. Mark 12. Verse 28. <clears throat> you there? It says that one of the scribes came. And having heard them reasoning together. And perceiving that he answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? Next verse. Jesus answered, answered him, the first of all the commandments is, yea, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Next verse. And thou shalt what? Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength, this is the first commandment. That you love God. And people need to see, and people need to know that you love the Lord by how you display yourself, how you display Him. Are you seeing that church? And what's the next commandment? Let's go next verse. It says, and the second is like, namely this. Thou shalt love what? Who? Thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other, there is none other commandment greater than these. So the first commandment is what? To love the Lord God with all thine heart, with all thy self, with every fiber of our being. Am I right? And the second one is to what? To love thy neighbor. So what does it tell you? That when you love God and when you know that you are the one that love God with all your heart. Oh, be the next commandment that will come to pass. That you will love your neighbor. Are you seeing that church? That you will love your neighbor. True love for God is not seen when you have needs. Come on, I want you to see this church. When you show people that you love God. When people can see how you love them. And people can see how the love that's coming out of you. That's why Jesus said, when you what? By the love that you have, they will know that you are my disciples. Amen? When you're out there, when, when people look at you and say, Man, Wow, this person, I, I can see the love that he has for God. Amen? And that same love that he has for God, I can see how it's coming through. And how he's loving me because of the love that he has for the Father. Amen? I see in that church. That's why the true love for God is not seen when you have needs. I want you to catch this very carefully, church. I want you to see this very carefully. And this is a mistake that we make. 
True love for God is not seen when you have needs. It is seen when you have no needs and all your needs are met. I want you to think about that. See, when you have needs, when you, when you cannot pay your children's school fees, what do you do? You go on your knees and you pray. You say, God, I love you. God, I, 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 this, this is what I'm faced with. These are challenges. These are troubles that I have. The true love for God is when you have no needs and all your needs are met. How much do you still desire God? How much do you still show God coming through you? How much do you say, God, you are still number one in my life. You are still the one God that I will follow. You are still the one that is priority. You are still the one, my God, that I will look unto all the days of my life. I see that church. And when people see the love that you have for God, even though every need of yours is met, everything that you have is taken care of, they still see how you love God. Things that's never taken over your life. Come on, am I right? God is not, is not concerned about you having things, church. He's concerned about things having you. That's why I'm saying to you, the true love for God will only be tested when you have no needs. And that will show you how much you really love God. And I want to show you the scripture in, uh, in 2 Samuel. Let's go quick. 2 Samuel. I want to show you the life of David. And this will really bless you. 2 Samuel. If there's amen, verse 7, chapter 7. Can I read? All right. 2 Samuel chapter 7. He says, Now it came about, in verse 1, when the king lived in his house, this is David. Now it came about when the king lived in his house, in his palace, and the Lord had given him rest on every side from all his enemies. What a place to be. Hey. There you are. David's living in a palace. He has rest from all his enemies. He has nothing to worry about. No needs at all. He's have, let me read that for you. He says, Now it came about when the king lived in his house, his palace, and the Lord had given him rest on every side from all his enemies. Don't you think that is a good place to be? You think like, hey, I have everything. I don't need nothing and I don't need anyone. But hear this next statement that he made. That the king said to Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells within the tent curtains. Nathan said to the king, Go do all that is in your mind, for the Lord is with you. Church, even though David had everything, he was in a palace, he still said, he said, that the king said to Nathan, the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells within the tent of curtains. He said it cannot be like that. It cannot be like that. He said, I desire the presence of God. The ark cannot dwell in the tent of curtains. That's why he desired what? If you continue reading that story, what was his desire? Is to build a house for the Lord. Am I right? Are you seeing that church? How we can make a mistake and how we can miss it. Is that when we think that ah, our true love is only displayed when we have needs. No. Our true love is displayed when we have no needs. And how much do we still desire God? How much do we still say God I want your presence. I will not let go of your presence. Amen. Are you seeing that church? Because that's when people truly see and they say, wow, even though this man is so blessed, even this, this guy, the, whatever, God has blessed him so much. But man, look at how he loves God. And look at the things that he, that he is speaking about God. Look at the things, everything that comes out of his mouth is about God. I sing church. Amen. So church, firstly, the love 
we got to love the lord and love your neighbors because the way you love god the way you love god himself will all determine how you love others amen you will not be judgmental you will not see them through eyes of of judging somebody no you will look at them as god sees them the starting point i always said is at the cross amen because that's who the way jesus paid the price on the cross of calvary he died even for the murderer he died for every single one amen so when you love god you will look at everyone with the eyes of innocence and you will show that love to them that will draw them to our father amen are you seeing that church this morning amen so let me just give you a few things quickly of how do we go out and when we go out and living our faith is that we got to look at our lives and say does my life reflect jesus well <laughs> why are you also quite on me this morning is it you're still in a holiday mood does my life reflect jesus well are we going to are we going to question ourselves church are we going to ask ourselves as as my life reflect jesus well because how we our lives reflect jesus is how we will live out our faith when we out there am i right are you catching that church does my life reflect jesus well does my thought life honor christ does my thought life honor christ amen why because in living out your faith your thoughts and your mind has got to be what the mind of christ am i right your thoughts have got to be what the thoughts of jesus you got to carry his mind amen so the first one is but does my life reflect jesus well secondly does my thought life honor christ thirdly does my words and speech represent jesus does my words and speech represent jesus god is saying this year church let our words come out of our mouth that is going to be words that's going to set the atmosphere and change things around us it is god's word listen in the book of genesis in genesis 1 how did god create by his words amen by his words and the words that come out of our mouth you got to look at it and say does my words and my speech represent jesus am i speaking the words of jesus am i speaking the words that's in the bible am i speaking what god has been speaking church how are we going to change our nation how are we going to change our city how are we going to change our circumstances around us is we're going to speak what god has been speaking amen because there's a creative power in god's word that makes things a reality and the next one is does my attitude mirror those of jesus does my attitude mirror those of jesus philippians chapter 2 i have this attitude which was in christ amen i have this attitude which was in christ that he laid his life down amen he emptied himself of all deity he took the form of man he came and humbled himself and god he said they that humbles themselves he will exalt are you seeing that church the attitude that we have going forward and and in in our lives to show forth and to to display and to live our faith out there is to have the attitude of Jesus amen to have the attitude of Jesus and then does my behavior and lifestyle point people to Jesus this is very important does my behavior does my lifestyle point them to Jesus Hello you listening judge does my lifestyle does my lifestyle does my behavior does it point 
to Jesus. I see this church. I'm, God is bringing this to us. Uh, don't you love God? That he will bring things to you so that he can, that you can put in place what we need to put so that we are able to go into this year and be able to see God's supernatural things that are happening in our lives. Amen? Why? God's saying, if you're going to withdraw and, and keep everything to yourself and keep your faith to yourself, he says, how am I going to display myself through you? Oh, come on. That came out of my spirit, church. How is God going to display himself in your life if you are the one that is what? Keeping everything on the inside. And you are not willing to share. You are not willing to speak. You are not willing to let people know. And you are not living out your faith in wherever you go. I seen that church? Do you want Jesus to come and work through you this year? Come on. And none of you. There's only two of you. Do you want Jesus to come and, and work in your life and work through you that you're able to see? But people are able to see how this, this is impossible. How can this man really be the one to do this? It's impossible. Remember I said last year? Our lives have got to be what? A sign and a wonder. Don't look for signs and wonders, church. Let our lives be a sign and a wonder. Let people look at us and say, man, you are a truly a sign and a wonder for God. Let them see. Let our lives be a sign and a wonder. Amen? Let people see our lifestyle. Let them see how we are living and how we are doing things that will cause them to give their lives to the Lord, to move in the direction that, that God wants them to move in. Amen? Am I right, church? We've got to be the ones to say, God, let my behavior and my lifestyle point people to Jesus. Are you catching this church? Now are you, are you getting some points of how do we live our faith out? How do we live our faith out in our daily lives? Is this good enough? It's good for you? Amen? So the love the Lord and love your neighbor. Amen? You gotta ask your question. Does my life reflect Jesus well? Does my thought life honor Christ? Does my words and speech represent Jesus? Does my behavior, lifestyle point people to Jesus? Does my decisions, the next one, does my decisions, money practices, and relationships remind people of Jesus? In the way we do things, in the decisions that we take, in money practices, in our relationships, does it remind people of Jesus? How we relate to each other? Amen? Does it remind them of Jesus. Come on. This is how we live our faith out. Church, and this year we are going to go all out to show the world who Jesus truly is. Come on. We have got to go out. We must never be ashamed. We walk into, we walk into the, the, the workplace or wherever you are going. You, you just got to walk in there. When people look at you, they say, wow. Even if they say, yeah, here is Jesus coming in. It's a great place to be. <laughs> Come on, am I right? Imagine you walking in and people look and say, wow. Jesus just came into the room. Why? Because your life represents him. Your life represents him. You walk in there, you don't be afraid to say, man, how, you know, Jesus loves you. Jesus blesses you. you, you you've got to be the one. You've got to live out your faith. Live out what God has put on the inside. Live out what God has done in our lives, church. People need to see it. Amen? People need to see it. I see that church. You see, all these things that I, I just gave you now, in other words, do the works and deeds of my life prove my faith or is my faith dead? Amen? What have I just shared with you? Is his words, do the works and deeds of my life prove my faith or is my faith dead? See, church, your faith will only be proven in your works. Come on, don't be fooled. Don't let the enemy keep you bound. In the things that you do, 
your faith is shown church your faith is shown amen in every in your day to day running of your life people see your faith people see your faith amen i see that church you got to use your gifts remember i spoke to you about those who were here for the christmas message i spoke that god has placed gifts on the inside of you am i right god has put gifts on the inside of you you got to use your gifts how do you display and how do you live out your faith your gifts has got to be displayed people need to see the gifts that god has placed on the inside of you amen that you will become impactful this year that you will not you will not just go through life just going in the motion no a mediocre life no you've got to come up higher and god is saying when you take the stand to live out your faith every single day church this is the problem in church today this is a problem with a lot of a lot of our christians some of them in the workplace don't know that they're christians <laughs> i'm serious why because we we hiding that you have got to be so bold from now going forward you got to be so bold to say hey i'm a child of god and i want you to see it i want you to see the faith that i operate in and how god has brought me through and how god has has brought me through everything think of everything that god has brought you through and think of everything that god has done in your life would you not want to share that with people come on church Will you not want to share that with people and say look at what God has done in my life look at the faith that God that 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 I that I hold on to God and the faith that I have in him that has brought me to where I am Are you catching it this morning your gifts you got to use your gifts church on a daily basis use your gifts to live out your faith because God has given you that gifts not to keep on the inside but is to use those gifts to what to draw people so that they can be touched as you've been touched amen look at this in uh, in peter 1 peter chapter 4 i just got 5 minutes more we done 1 peter chapter 4 you there In verse 10 can we read this together judge i want you to understand this and i said this to you when i when i shared that message on christmas day don't ever think that we are the ones that standing on the pulpit are the only ones that are gifted come on don't ever look at it. you see this is a problem this is a problem that i find with the children of god those that are that are christians this is a problem that i have you got to know god for yourself hello and then when you know god for yourself you know the gifts that god has placed on the inside of you you know what god has gifted you the problem is we look to the pulpit and we think that those that are standing in the front are the only one that's gifted they're the only ones that can lay hands on the sick and they can recover you can do that when your child at 3 o'clock in the morning is suffering and she's sick or he's sick what do you do do you call and you phone pastor or do you are the one that can lay hands on that child and say in the name of jesus be healed there's a gift god has given us those gifts church and that's why we are looking to men at the pulpit to go like the days of moses when god said i want to meet the people personally Don't consecrate yourself and come and meet me at the mountain. What do they do? They say, "No, Moses, ah, you go. We want to stay here. You go and meet God, and you come and tell us after that what God told you, what God told us." God is saying, "I want a personal relationship with you. I want to meet you personally." I want to know you personally. Amen. That's why we look to the men of uh, the pulpit. We look at they the ones that are gifted and everything we want to draw out of them. And what happens? Look at what's happening now. How many men are falling? And how many lives are being destroyed because of that? 
Because you, the congregation, trusted those that are standing on the pulpit. And one thing that happens destroys their lives. God is saying, I have gifted you and the gifts that I placed in you, I want to work it out in you so that you can become a blessing. Amen? Look at this here in verse 10. It says, As each one has received a special gift, employ it in what? Serving one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. I see that church. As each one has received a special gift, employ it in serving one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Whoever speaks is to do so as one who is speaking the utterances of God. Whoever serves is to do so as one who is serving by the strength which God supplies so that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ to whom belongs the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Listen, the gifts that God has given you, he said, go and serve one another with those gifts. How do we what? Live out our faith. This is the way, church. God has gifted us. He says, now go and serve one another. Go and serve one another with those gifts that I've placed in you. How many of you, do you all believe that you are gifted? Even the moms that are at home, you are gifted to pray. You are gifted to pray. You might think, well, I'm just an housewife, I'm just at home. No, you are gifted to pray. You pray for the man of God. Pray for the church. Pray for your children. Pray. God has gifted us. He's gifted us with something that we can serve one another. Amen? I see that, church. You got to use your gifts. And then you got to show your gratitude. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. I spoke about this on Thanksgiving. That we've got to give thanks to God. We have got to what? Have a, a heart of gratitude. We've got to show gratitude. That when people see how you're thanking God for everything that you... It, there's, not a de there's not one thing that God has given you that you don't thank Him for. How do we live our faith? Is we are grateful. Out of gratitude. Amen? We show our gratitude. We show our gratitude. We say, God, you know, you know when you stand and you say somebody, you know, look at what, look at what I have come through. And I can only but thank God. I can only thank my Jesus for what has happened. You know what that does to people? Come on, church. Do you know what that does to people? When you could stand there and say, you know what, I thank my God for bringing me through this. And when they have gone through challenges and they don't know who to look to, don't know where to go to, don't know what, what to do. But here you are standing and you're saying, you know, I thank Jesus for bringing me through everything that I've gone through. I hope when you spend time with families, even unbelieving families, that you took the time and prayed. Even when you were just about to have your Christmas lunch that you held hands or you, or you stood there and you prayed and thank God and thank Jesus for what you're about to partake. You see, these are things, church, how we live out our faith is that way. Amen? Where people can see how even amongst Amongst unbelievers, we sit and we're still able to thank God. We still be able to say, God, thank you for everything that you have done. Thank you, Lord, for what we are about to partake. Are you catching it, church? God is saying, we're going to live our faith out loudly this year. And we're going to live it out boldly. We're going to live it out boldly, church. And then lastly, number 10. I gave you what? 10 points. All right. Do your best. Living out our faith is doing your best, church. Is doing your best. Let me close with this uh, one, sorry, Colossians. 
Book of Colossians, chapter 3, and in verse 23. You there? Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. It says, Whatever you do, do your work, what? Utterly as for the Lord rather than for men. Is there any other versions? Okay, and whatsoever you do, do it utterly as to the Lord and not unto men. Does anyone have any other interpretation on that? Any other version? Is it all the same? And whatsoever you do, do it utterly as to the Lord. Do it from your heart. Do it to the best that you can. Church, if you are serving God this year, serve Him the best. Amen. Serve Him in every way. Serve Him in the way that, that you know that you are giving off the best to God. Church, listen to me. I, I'm saying this to you. And I, 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 you. I'm not just saying these words out of my lips. I live this church. I've laid my life down for this. I laid everything down for the Lord. I've given God my best. That's why there's sometimes, as much as we are men, you know, we go back and say, Lord, have we really given off our best? We, I know that I've given off my best. In everything that I do. Amen. You've got to give off your best in everything you do. In serving God, in whatever you are doing for the Lord, you have got to what? Do your best. It says, whatever you do, do your work heartily as for the Lord rather than for men. There's some people that will do things just to show man. Don't ever do that, church. Don't ever do that. Everything that you do, do it unto the Lord. Do it unto the Lord. See, when you do it unto the Lord, even when you make mistakes, nobody knows it. <laughs> Come on. Even when you make mistakes, nobody. Why? Because you have done it unto the Lord. But when you do it unto men, everything, you got to look and you got to so conscious of everything that you do. But when you do it unto God, you have the peace to do it because you know you're doing it to your best of your ability and you're doing it unto Him. Are you catching that church? Amen. I, I want you this year. Let us, let us go into this year. Let us go in saying, God, I want to live my faith out. And church, let me leave this with you. Living faith, living your faith or living faith where we live in his presence. Amen. When you live out your faith, you are living in his presence. Let that sink in with you. You are living in his presence when you live out your faith every single day. This is how people are going to see the Lord that we serve. Faith without works is dead. Come on church. Faith, tell your neighbor, faith without works is dead. Tell your neighbor that faith without works is dead. So come on, let us go out and let us do the works of the Lord. Let us work the works so that people can see the faith that we have. People can see the faith that we are living in. Amen. Because we are living by faith. Amen. And we're going to live out our faith on a daily basis. Amen. Everything that we do, church, we're going to know and we're going to see and say, does my life reflect Jesus well? We're going to ask ourselves these questions. Does my life reflect Jesus well? When you lie in bed at night, you're going to look and say, did I reflect Jesus well this day? Is there something or did I hurt somebody or did I do something that you can go and fix, church? But we've got to live our lives every single day that we've got to know that our faith is lived out. And we've got to be loud. And we've got to be bold this year, church. We've got to live it out loud. And we've got to live it out boldly this year. Amen, church? Because God is doing something incredible in our nation. God is doing something on the earth. And we as the children of God, we have got to rise. We have got to come up to the next level. And we've got to say, God, you've got to be the one to use me. You've got to be the one, Lord, to use me this year. How many of you want to be used of God this year? Amen? Come on. And God is going to use you. If, you have, if that's your desire, that's what God is going to do. Amen. Are you catching that church? So we declare this day that we're going to have the best life. We are going to live in the presence of the Almighty God. And people are going to see 
who we are, people are going to see our faith. We're going to live our faith out every single day of our lives, wherever we go, whether we are in our business, whether we're in our jobs, whether we're in our schools, wherever we go, church, we are going to live out our faith and people are going to see really who are the children of God and how we operate on the earth. Come on, stand to your feet and we're going to make that declaration this morning. We're going to declare this morning and say, God, we are not going to be passive any longer. We are not going to be just quiet any longer, Lord. We are going to be loud. We are going to be bold. We are going to rise, my God. We are going to rise, Lord. We are going to rise. We are going to speak about our church. We are going to be the ones to go out and say, God. We want to go out and say, we are going to say to people, come. This is where God is. This is what God wants to do in your life. Come and be part of what God is doing. We have got to be bold this year. We have got to go out and say, God, use us mightily. Use us that we can draw people into your presence. Draw people into the house. Draw people into your church, oh God. Come on, church. Just raise your hands this morning. Raise your hands and thank God for the word that he has released this morning. Just thank you. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. Thank you, Lord, for keeping us on that straight and narrow. Thank you, my God, for aligning us. Oh God, for readjusting our lives, Father. Readjusting us, oh God. Lord, I thank you for everything that you have placed in us, that you have downloaded us, oh God. Even through the year 2023, whatever you have downloaded loaded in us. God, everything that you've released in our lives, oh God, Lord, we will not stay passive, my God, but Father, we will go out. We will live our lives boldly, my God. We will live our faith out boldly, Lord. We will live our faith out loud, my God. Come on, just declare that this morning, church. Tell the Lord this morning, God, I will live out my faith loudly. I will live out my faith boldly, Lord. I will not be afraid, my God. I will not be afraid of speaking about Jesus. Jesus. I will not be afraid, oh God, of telling them of your goodness. I will not be afraid, my God, of telling them who you are. I will not be afraid, oh Lord, of telling them what you have done in my life. I will not be afraid, my God, of speaking of you, Lord. I will not be afraid, Lord. I will not be afraid this year, Father. I will go out, my God. People will know that I'm a child of God. People will know that I'm a child of the Most High God. Lord, I thank you that I will be loud and I will be bold in my faith, oh God, as we go out this year father oh i pray that in the name of jesus i pray that in the name of jesus come on raise your hands let me release a grace upon you church i want to release a grace upon you this year that our lives will be a testimony wherever we go. Our lives will be a true testimony. Our lives will not turn people away, but they will draw people to the kingdom of God. They will draw people to the kingdom of God. They will not, our lives will not turn people away from God, but our lives will draw people to God. They will draw to God. They will draw to the house. They will draw to God in a greater way. Oh, Father, I pray. Oh, Lord, I pray. I release your grace upon your children this morning, Lord. I release your grace, my God. Real grace of God to be a testimony for you, oh Lord. A grace, my God, of the life that they will live, oh God, that will turn others to you, my God. Lord, a life, Father, that will not lose people, God, but a life that will draw people to your kingdom. A life that will draw people to your kingdom. Them. Release that grace upon your children. Come on, raise your hands this morning. Receive that grace this morning from the Lord. Receive it from God. Oh, Rebo Shendelebe Sita Raba. Libra Shanda Laba Sito Robobo. Receive that grace, church. Receive that grace this morning. God is releasing that upon you. God is releasing that in the house. He's releasing over your life that you will draw people to Him. You will draw people to God. You will draw people to the house. You will draw people to the kingdom of God. Your life will be a testimony unto him. Oh God, I thank you, Father, for that grace that you release upon them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, give the Lord a mighty shout of praise. Hallelujah! We bless you, my God. We bless you, Jesus.